Hello everyone, thank you for joining me today. We're in beautiful Sicily. So we've got a little bit of the kids in the background. <laughs> so we're gonna start uh, just by closing your eyes, bringing your awareness inside, taking a few deep breaths. First pose we're going to come into is reclined butterfly. So you can use a rolled blanket or you can put the bolster under your shoulders. Um, just have it lengthwise on your mat. Uh, the base should be parallel with your shoulder blades and then just kind of relax back. If you have a bolster, you might want to put a blanket under your head as a pillow so your neck's not uh, tweaked too far back. And then just go ahead and bring your knees together and then let them kind of flop out to the side. If this bothers your knees, you can always put some uh, blankets or blocks under your knees. But if you can and if this is comfortable, go ahead and just let gravity gently release those hips and open the heart. And just start to relax all of your muscles and breathe. Okay, slowly using your hands, bring your knees back together. Roll over to one side and bring the blanket or roll towel out from under you. Take a moment on your back before you come to a seated position. The next pose we're going to come into is called dragonfly. So if you have a rolled, or excuse me, a folded blanket or towel, um, that really is helpful for most people to sit on the edge of to help your pelvis tilt forward. So then we're going to spread our legs out wide. And then uh, if, you, if it's comfortable, go ahead and fold forward. You can give yourself some support if you'd like to rest on a bolster, blocks. Um, if you're okay, you can just let gravity bring you down. Uh, just remember in these poses to relax your muscles as much as possible. So we're trying to get into the connective tissue of the body in yin yoga. So muscles, we want to take the muscle out of it as much as possible because normally your muscles engage to protect your joints and connective tissue. But since we're trying to get in there and stretch them and make them stronger, 
your joints and your, your fascia, your ligaments. Your muscles need to be able to feel supported and relax in order for us to get into those areas. So just remember not to have, if you have any shooting, sharp pain, or numbness, please back out of the pose. You can uh, do a different pose or maybe modify the one you're in, but sharp shooting pain, we don't want. But if you just feel very uncomfortable, that's what we want. Uncomfortable means you're doing something. So just go ahead and breathe, relax, feel your hips in this pose and your lower back opening up. Slowly using your hands, push yourself back up to seated. Bend your legs, kind of shake them out, maybe do some windshield wipers. Next pose we're going to come into after this is called shoelace. So let's take a, a minute to do some cat and cows before we come into it. So the easiest way for me is to bring your one knee behind the other and then sit back in between your feet. So you don't want to be on your feet, you want to be in between them. You can also just do this from a seated position and put one leg over the top of the other. So you can either sit straight up or if you feel comfortable you can go ahead and start to lean forward. And uh, as I said before you can um, use a block bolster to rest on. If you used a, roll, a folded blanket in the last pose, this is definitely a good one still to stay on that blanket to help the pelvis roll forward. Now this is a pretty intense hip stretch. So you're gonna feel it a little more in the leg that's on top. And then your lower back gets a good stretch in this as well.
Okay, mindfully start to push your back way back up to seated. Using your hands, pull your legs out of that position. Kind of do some windshield wipers. Be gentle with your body. If you feel like you're 100 years old coming out of these poses, you're doing it right. So just make sure you're mindful of your body. Never push too hard. This is a really great time to tune into your body. You'll get to know your body and what it can do and what you're comfortable with if you continue to do yin. And just remember each side is different. One side may be very different than the other. So be patient with your body. There's no rush. Modify if you need to. This is your practice. Okay, gently push yourself up to seated, taking your time, release your legs, get the blood flowing through them again. That's a pretty intense hip opener. You can do windshield wipers, reverse tabletop, whatever would feel good to you. We're going to come into a back bend. Uh, it's called saddle. Now, if you your knees bother you, uh, please don't do this pose. You can do a sphinx instead or um, supported bridge. But if your knees are okay, go ahead and start in seated. And if you need some support, you can sit on a block. Then if you're comfortable, you can go ahead and start to lay back. Now, if you don't want to go all the way down, you can put a bolster, uh, lengthwise, or excuse me, shortwise with your mat. So like under your head and the top of your shoulders. So if, if you want to stay on a bolster, you can do that. And then you won't, it won't be quite as intense because this can be an intense pose. Um, so you can do that, modify any way you like. And if it does become too much, uh, you might want to back off. So this is great for the knee joints, the quadriceps. This is a pretty intense low back stretch a back bend 
you don't really feel this one till you come out of it in your back. Uh, but I, I didn't like this pose at first because it's, it's a toughie, but uh, now it's my favorite yin pose. I could stay here forever. So um, play with it. You know, like I said, if, you, if this doesn't work for your body, then do another back bend. And just tr try to relax your muscles in this pose. Sometimes we keep our legs tense in this one, so just try to consciously relax all of your muscles and breathe. Okay, to come out of this pose, you can either prop yourself up on your arms and push yourself up, or if you're able, you can bring one foot out in front of you at a time. Just be very mindful coming out of this pose. You will definitely feel it in your lower back. So we can, uh, you can go into child's pose, cat cows. Just give your low back time to relax and your legs to uh, get the blood flow going back through them. Now I'm sitting on a pretty lumpy rock here so for the seated, I'm doing a seated twist here but if you would prefer you can do a twist laying on the ground. You can put both knees over to one side, uh, one knee over the straight leg or eagle legs. So whatever twist would feel good to you. So if you're seated like I am, it's a little more muscular. So just try to relax as much as you can. Um, I do prefer a laying down twist, but uh, the rock here isn't going to allow me to do that comfortably. Just go ahead and breathe. And if you're seated, go ahead and lift up with every inhale and twist with every exhale. And you can do that to an extent on the floor as well. Twists are a great way to readjust your spine toward the end of your practice. Because the spine needs to be stretched in all directions. A healthy spine keeps you young. And one of the best things about yin yoga is it doesn't matter what your pose looks like, it matters what it feels like. So in a traditional yang class, you're moving quickly from pose to pose, so alignment's important so you don't get injured. But in yin, we have time to really settle in, feel our body. So depending on where we really want to feel it, we can adjust with props or our body positioning because it is your practice. So I want you to get the most benefit.
Okay, go ahead and come back to center. Readjust. If you're cross-legged, you may want to switch which legs in front. And go ahead and breathe in, lift up, and twist to the other side. Again, your body's not symmetrical, so you may twist further on one side than the other. That's perfectly normal. As long as you're feeling it, you're doing it right. Okay, let's slowly come back to center. Take a moment, maybe roll out your neck, straighten your spine. And when you're ready, we're gonna come into your most comfortable position for Shavasana. Now, if you have a bolster, it feels good to put that under your knees. It kind of helps your uh, femurs go back into your sockets and rest. Uh, you may want to put a rolled blanket under your ankles, or you may not like to be on your back. You can do child's pose, whatever your most comfortable position is. Just go ahead, let everything go. This is your time to relax.
Start to bring awareness back into your body. Start to wiggle your fingers and toes. Bring your knees into your chest and roll over to one side for a moment. And when you're ready, push yourself up to seated. Keeping your eyes closed. Just pay attention to how you feel right now. Try to keep that feeling with you the rest of your day. Hands to heart center. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me today.